Pastor, I am Yuri Folare. Um, today, let's continue where we left off uh, uh, yesterday, uh, by which I mean that we were looking at the Oransoye report, um, commissioned by President Jonathan, and um, it's been submitted, and shall we say it's been um, uh, cooling its heels on the shelves uh, ever since then. Um, that is not to say that nothing was ever done about it anymore, but the important thing is that it didn't see the light of day until the president, President Tinobu, on Monday uh, in a Federal Executive Council meeting had said that now this, uh, that particular report is about to be implemented in full. I spoke about various aspects of it yesterday with uh, Prince Momo. Uh, today, our guest is Dr. Daniel Boala. Dr. Daniel Boala is a lawyer and a policy analyst. A fine morning to you. Thank you very much for making time for us. Thank you for having me, Mr. Yuri. Good morning to Nigeria. Indeed. Um, one of the things that have come up, uh, first of all, the Oransoye report, long story short, if, uh, if that is even possible, is that it's all about a leaner government that would be a lot more cost effective and save us scarce funds. That's maybe the long and short of it. Of course, efficiency must also be in there and all of that. But the question I want to ask you to start off with, Dr. Boala, is um, do you think that that report, the way it was made, is still uh, fit for purpose? Well, uh, thank you for having me, and good morning to Nigerians. Yeah. One thing about governance, and generally, is that at every given time, you review steps, you review decisions, and then you modify them to suit the present uh, circumstance. So the fact that Mr. President approved the full implementation of the report does not in any way suggest that the President is saying, would like and think, I just do it verbatim. But the spirit and the intent of that uh, report is what the President is talking about, its implementation. In other words, the, the President is also saying, in, in essence, that in implementing this Orosa report, implement and suggest to me those ones that are realistic, those ones that are not we will, we will drop them. But I think there's a misconceived notion that people have, thinking that because he said he approved the full implementation of that report, then what it means is that even the non-essentials in the report must be brought to bear. First of all, the whole spirit and intent of that report of Orosa here was to bring about effectiveness and efficiency in civil service, which of course, uh, well, contrary to the general belief that political space is what floats the government, civil service is actually at the place where you have the government either eff working efficiently or that the government is even over bloated. So, for example, the RSI report of, uh, that uh, President Bullock Jonathan commissioned, the same Attorney General in that administration said, oh, there was no need for us to do the full implementation. And so they discarded the most part of it. When Buhari came on board, Wari also caused a committee to be, you know, set up to look at not just the Orosai report and the white paper, but also to look at agencies and ministries that emerged after the Orosai report. And then they did their own, they gave him their uh, conclusion on the matter, he attempted one or two things and they dropped. Now, but President Mola Abitinu is one that uh, everyone knows him as a courageous, courageous person. If he wants to do something, he doesn't look back. And uh, he's well aware of backlash, he's well aware of criticism. It's just like the case of the removal of first subsidy and the plunging of the Naira. You will see that all the past government, they knew its importance, but they also knew the consequence of doing it. And that's why no one touched it. But when he came, he felt, no, we cannot keep postponing our future. It's like the case of a family that is consistently living on credit, on borrowing, on credit, on borrowing. And at the end of the day, you will have to face yourself. You have to face the reality of the fact that are we actually making progress or should we live by our means? So, in essence, the report is doable. Uh, however, the implementation of the report will call for a number of factors. Those ones that need streamlining, you streamline. Those that, those ones that need legislative reform to bring them to conformity with reality. So, for example, if you have two agencies, you want to you know, merge them into one, and both of these agencies have their any laws then definitely you will have to repeal and replace those laws with one law that will then cover all of that. Like, for example, the EFCC. You have the EFCC Act, you have the ICPC Act. If you are going to bring them together with a code of conduct, then, of course, you have to repeal all of this act and then replace them with one act that will govern. If some of these uh, uh, agencies or departments 
uh, uh, such that maybe uh, their functionality also enjoys the blessings of the Constitution. And that means you are stretching beyond just uh, amending the act to look at the constitutional amendment. But the 12 weeks that the president has given for the full implementation, it is not cast on so. If we get to the 12th week, and it is obvious that we've made a lot of progress, but we also need further time. This president is the type of person that is open to these kind of uh, uh, realities. So uh, people should take their minds off of the fact that because he says he ordered the full implementation, it means that even if a part of the recommendation in that report is no longer feasible, it means it must be brought to bear. No, that is not what the president is suggesting. The president is saying the spirit and the letter of that report, which is to bring about efficiency, effectiveness of the civil service, the time to do the reform is now.